Hello everybody, I hope you're doing fantastically well. Welcome back to Connor here on the One Leads Fan Channel. And I'm here to talk to you about TeamWallArt.com. Now listen, for the channel to prosper, for the channel to have the creativity and the innovativeness that we have, we need you to go and buy a product from Team Wallart, guys, because it helps us. They help us run as a Leeds United fan channel. And what I love about them in particular is they're Leeds fans. They're not just some generic brand. They are Leeds fans, so we need to be supporting them. Um, and I think it's they've got some great gear as well, guys. They've got a new Rafinha plaque, which Brownie's just got, which is absolutely mint. I think you guys have been ordering it um, in abundance, which is great to see. But if you'd go over there with the code One Leeds, you get a 10% discount, and you can get plaques for as cheap as a fiver. It's worldwide shipping for an incredible rate. Go over there, guys. Check them out and enjoy the video. Hello everybody, hope you're doing fantastically well. It is Connor, it is back. We have the rumour mill here for you this evening. It's not afternoon, I did, that's what I was planning to do. I was planning to do it in the afternoon, but life gets in the way. I hope you're all doing fantastically well and all you Leeds fans are happy, you're healthy, you're smiling and you're here. You're here for the rumour mill. You want to hear some juicy transfer news, you want to see some player profiles, you want to see what's going on in the Leeds United world. Well, I'm here to give you that, guys. I'm here to try my best and give you that. Um, I hope everyone's enjoying the intro. Uh, James Frew in the intro is getting me hyped. There you go, guys. That's what it's about, the thumbnails, the intros. We're trying to get everything absolutely perfect for you this time out. I am trying my best. So if you want to um, help out the channel, there is a PayPal link in the section below. Or do as a solid, get something from Team Wallout so the channel can function on an elite level. Now, we are here to talk about T. Yun. Coop Miner, it's just what a name, what a name, what an enforcer he already sounds like. That is such a name, isn't it? Tayan Coop Miner. Oh, he just, he, he gets my blood going and this is the guy, this is the guy who I am looking forward to seeing if Leeds can get over the line. Could we get it done? Could we get that sort of deal done? What a player. I've seen in the comment section below, um, I, th I think he was he, he was Dutch. If you are in the comment section, it was D something was saying, could he fit into this Leeds United side? And that is the question. That's the big question. But that's what Victor Orta gets paid the big bucks for to see if we can get someone like T. Young, Coop Miners and get him in the squad. Um, because cheap value, young lad, absolutely blowing away the Eredivisie this year. And let's get into um, the pie and mash of why Leeds United should go in for Tian Coop Miners. Um, let's see how everybody is doing. Kenny Pedersen, brilliant name. Match on together from Aarhus, Denmark. That's amazing to see. Uh, how long until the 49ers invest in one Leeds? I don't know. Who knows? I mean, I mean, I don't know. I think I might be a bit too expensive for him, mate. <laughs> too much coffee uh, not enough coffee actually today uh, Stephen it's, it's just been peppermint tea for me today but let's get into it guys um, we're going to be talking about Tian uh, today and listen he's a young player absolute pulling up trees in the Eredivisie and he looks like an absolute wonderful talent and, and we spoke about uh, Roma Perot last week I hope you enjoyed that first segment of the rumour mill this is the second segment and hopefully you're building a little bit of an idea of the sort of players that I want um, in the summer. Because <laughs> that's all that matters. Of course, Connor. Uh, <laughs> no, but if we are to fit this sort of calibre players into our squad, going into it the next season, imagine the sort of team we really could lay out. And, and it gets me excited thinking about it. Roman Perot, uh, Tion Coop Miners, and we've got more and more to come, guys. So I hope, you, hope you're enjoying it. Um, Evening Connor says, Sam, hate this international break. Yeah, I'm trying to break it up for you, mate. I really am. So let's uh, share the screen as we always do, guys, uh, and we'll get into uh, the meat and gravy. So we're going to share my entire screen here. Don't worry, there's nothing bad there, I'd, I do hope. Um, so apologies for the background there. Uh, it's just what we what we have as a preset. But yeah, we're talking about tea and coop miners today. And what I wanted to talk about, I've got specific segments on Tian Coop Miners. And they're, they're the sections really, as Leeds fans, we need to be looking at in terms of that midfield presence that we need. You know, that midfield 
individual that we need within our ranks who's going to break up play, who's going to get us going forward. Um, and I think Coop Miners, in my personal opinion, is that guy. So I've, I've sectioned this uh, defensive positioning. Um, and these are just some highlights of uh, T and Coop Miners, and, and, and we can see exactly what he can bring to this Leeds United side. So here, as I've said, I think this is such a massive part of football nowadays. As a midfielder, it's absolutely huge that you're able to sweep up. Let me just get rid of that. Let me just, guys, you're going to just come with me on this full journey here because that, that review thing is doing my head in. So we're going to stop sharing, or we're just going to put my. There we go. We'll get a nice little lead. There we go. That's a bit better, isn't it? That's a bit better. Okay, so we're going to get back. We've already beaten Fulham. We've already passed that. Okay, so T and Coop Miners. Let's get back on him. Okay, so as you can see here, this is what I've titled defensive positioning. And the reason behind that is because I think that's just so vital with what Leeds need this year. I think there's been so many occasions where Leeds have been caught out. And the reason behind that is because we've had two eight steaming forward, which have essentially sometimes turned into two tens. Now, what the brilliant thing about T and Coop Miners is defensively, he's very astute. He's very aware. He's got a high football IQ. And that's why he's playing at such a good level. A lot of these clips are actually of him against Tevente, against PSV, against Ajax. They're against elite level era diverse A sides. So it's not going against you with all respect, the run of the mill sides. It's going against some real, real quality. And here I just wanted to pick out X marks the spot. Once again, guys, if you are fans of the rumor mill, you will know that X marks the spot on a lot of my screenshots. He's just so aware. They break out very quickly here. And we see this occasion with Leeds United very, very often. You know, we're, we're bare at the back. We're pushing men forward. AZ Altmar actually play a very progressive style of football. So this is where Coop Miners fits in very nicely. And he's just absolutely spotted the danger. And this is just an absolutely wonderful piece of play for him because, because what he does, and this is his football IQ, where can you see the danger here? It's not the man on the ball. It's the man behind him. And what Coop Miners does there is reverts to the man who's furthest away from the ball. His defensive position is absolutely perfect. It's exquisite. And he mops up the danger. And this is something I'd really love to see in this Leeds United side. Here is, once again, and as I've said, guys, I've titled this defensive positioning. It's the awareness. He's at this moment in time, he's sort of he's sort of in an attacking transition of a front three. And this guy's just on his own. Um, this PSV individual is on his own. And Coop Miners, and I've circled it obviously. I can't get the clip, unfortunately, for you guys, but look at the acres of space we have here for that individual. The absolute acres of space. And he just seeks it out. And this is a it's a constant theme. It's a constant theme we see with uh, T and Coop Miners. It's, it's, it's the snuffing out of danger. And this is absolutely brilliant because the PSV individual tries to get the ball, runs into space. Coop Miners having absolutely none of it. Once again, just showing how intelligent he is. And, and look at everybody else around as well. Static. Coop Miners is the only one on the move. And that's what I've got from watching a lot of Coop Miners. Even last summer when I was doing a bit of research on him. It's his intelligence in so many actions in the defensive third and the attacking third. <clears throat> Once again, defensive positioning in front of the ball. The ball's just been played out from the goalkeeper. What do we do with Elan Melier consistently? He's always looking for Calvin Phillips. You know, this is really interesting because Calvin Phillips isn't going to be part of this lead setup, and Coop Miners is going to come in as sort of a versatile midfielder who can play the eight, the six, the four. It's going to be really interesting to see whether or not we go for someone like him because. He's very press resistant. He's very good on the ball, as you can see here. He actually comes out of this situation on top and look at the pressure on him. And this is what Leeds have struggled with this season. It is the pressure element of it. It's, you know, when players are high pressing on them, top quality players, by the way, who are pressing high on them, Leeds do find it very difficult to get out and, and move with the, the phases of play. And Coop Miners is very, very good at this. <clears throat> Once again, here he is. I've not circled him here, but you can see you already know his stature marauding towards the ball. This is when FC Twente get away from um, AZ Altmar. They break away. And you can also, guys, see the results that Altmar are getting here. They're doing absolutely fantastically well. Coop Miners is the captain. Four out of five wins. Third in the Eredivisie. So they're doing very, very well at this moment in time. He snuffs out the danger here and gets a throw in for his side. Now, this is something which I know a lot of you won't like. Once again, he's against Ajax here, one of the top uh, midfields in the division, if not the top, <clears throat> excuse me. And it's winning fouls. 
And this is something that Luke Ayling does extremely well. We look at his ball recoveries. We look at his recoveries, even in his, his defensive third and how he progresses up the pitch and gets leads into really good attacking phases. The reason he does that is because he's able to win fouls and it's the dark arts of football. It's not going down. It's not diving but it's doing what every other single player does in the Premier League. And I think we've learned that a lot this year about teams in the Premier League and individuals in the Premier League. They will go down at the slightest touch. Coop Miners, not only is he an enforcer, not only is he elegant on the ball, but his football IQ doesn't only transitions when he's on the ball, but it's his sort of gamesmanship as well in these certain situations. And from watching him consistently, you do see this a lot. He buys fouls, you know, he buys fouls. There is always contact, but he does this extremely well. From this particular uh, phase of play here, Ayers and Altmar get a really, really good chance and they're really unlucky. But yeah, he wins a foul here. We see this here as well. It's once again that press-resistant side of uh, of Coop Miners, which I was talking about. X marks a spot here. He's kept the ball. These two players have marshaled him all the way back. And he's about to uh, sort of move the ball from left to right. He doesn't. He goes down. And once again, AZ Altmar get a really good opportunity from this. Now, this is really interesting because here, he could go to his centre midfield partner and he doesn't decide to do that. And I thought to myself when I was watching it, Feyenoord, once again, if you look at the team that, it, that they're up against, they're really top, top side. Um, Coop Miners was one of the best players on the pitch in this game after watching all the highlights. And he was really giving this other centre midfielder a run around. And he goes down here. And I thought he could have actually moved possession on relatively quickly. And I think in a Marcelo Bielsa team, he's got to encourage you to stay on your feet. Don't get me wrong. We love the dark arts. We love stuff like that. But I think in a Marcelo Bielsa side, Coop Miners there has the option to pass to his centre midfielder. He's sort of waiting for the foul and then he goes down. A lot of people might turn around and say it's intelligence. I think in a Marcelo Bielsa setup, you're uh, you're not going down there. <laughs> Quite frankly, um, we've got a few uh, comments in the section below as well. He scores goals. Can't wait for him to score against San Marino. Um, once again, this is this is probably my my favourite uh, of what he did. Actually, this is him on the ball, putting a lovely little Cruyff turn in, um, and he actually wins possession here. And it's just a lovely little phase of play. Now, I've titled this one Interceptions. And once again, this is coming from a defensive standpoint. And this is what we love to see with Leeds United. You know, sometimes, and we've seen this a little bit more often um, in our sort of second half of the season, where we've become a little bit more direct, in my opinion. We sometimes bypass the midfield. And defensively, we can sort of sit in a 4-1-4-1 formation. And you sort of see a similar structure here, but a 4-4-2. And Coop Miners is taking up a really, really essential position here. And this is what I was talking about with his football IQ earlier. It's his positional awareness. He's always taking up the correct position. And I think that's the marker of an elite footballer. And Coop Miners does that extremely well. As you can see what I've circled here, he's cutting off the lines of supply to both uh, attacking players. And this is actually a ball which was played in uh, to the furthest man away. And Coop Miners made the interception and got AZ Altmar onto a very quick counter-attack, which is what we see with Leeds United. Once again, this is really similar to what we saw with Calvin Phillips against Fulham. Um, the PSV individual gets it here. <clears throat> Coop Miners, X marks the spot is where he started. And he makes up some ground very, very quickly, presses very, very high. And he's got a good engine on him. And you can see that he wins the ball very high up. And as you can see, look at the amount of bodies that AZ Altmar have got forward. And this is what we see with Leeds United all the time. We saw it against Fulham when Phillips won the ball high up and Rafinha and Bamford absolutely pounced on it. And Leeds United got the second. Um, this is what Coop Miners did here. And you can just see with a few adaptations, how he really, really would fit into this Leeds United side. It's really exciting to see. Positional awareness, once again, it also comes into aerial duels. He, he sort of occupies the six-yard box, which is really interesting. But this is what I'm talking about with positional awareness. And as you can see here, the AZ Altmar sort of, it's not a man-marking system, it's zonal. Um, you know, you come into my zone, I'm going to knock it away. And as you can see here by Coop Miner's positioning, that's exactly what he's done. But he's a tall lad, he's very physical, and I think that could be a massive, massive plus for Leeds United. Now, this is what this is what we absolutely love to see from our midfielders. Against PSV, look at him, absolutely dictating play. And I can tell you, for one, this led to a really, really good chance. Um, but this is what I've titled Passing IQ. And I know I keep mentioning Passing IQ, but in the Premier League, in this Leeds United side, it is such a massive thing. It's such a massive attribute which gets Leeds United moving. And having a high level of IQ in these situations is something that's going to get Leeds United moving, especially with the quality we have going forward. And someone like Coop Miners, who can play defensive midfield, he can play central midfield. Central midfield is 
his um, go-to really. But being a left footer as well, a left footer in there for Leeds would be a really nice um, balance, I think, to what what we already have in there potentially with Click Dallas and, and and you know Calvin Phillips, all right footers, and he's just got a wand of a left foot. We see him taking corners, free kicks, penalties, and he scored so many goals. And we'll get onto that in just a little bit, guys. But here, a wonderfully intelligent ball, and we just see that this in the next few clips here. Utrecht, he gets the ball and he's got the option to go to number three here. He's got the option to go laterally, which we see a lot with Leeds, don't we? And, and you know, that's just, that's how we build up phases of play. But sometimes Leeds United want to get that phase of play moving quicker, but we don't have that ability on the ball, in my personal opinion, in some situations. What I love about Coop Miners, he always wants to go forward and he's got a 93% total action success rate this year, which is absolutely staggering, especially when you compare that to a lot of Leeds United players and the fact that Coop Miners is consistently direct. He's consistently trying to go forward. Once again here, he had the ability to pass to his centre midfielder, which, you know, we do see sometimes with Leeds United going laterally is sort of the easy option. And, you know, maybe we're not confident in those areas at some in some phases of play. Coop Miners has got a wand of a left foot and, and it's a lovely little ball here, which leads to an A's that out my chance. Here we go. The big things that we all love, guys, the assists. And now the assists are something which gets us all a bit excited. <laughs> I do love assists. And, um, you know, when I was a, when I was a midfielder back in the day, um, I tried to see, I, I thought I was a bit of an enforcer, you know, but I'd, I'd also give myself that culture tag. You know, guys, we'll get a one leads five a side going at, one, at some point and we'll get you guys involved in that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I just love a cultured football player. You guys, if you've been on this channel long enough, you'll know one of my favourite players was Olivier Decor. Absolutely love Decor. And Coop Miners gives me that left-footed vibe of Olivier Decor. A wonderful assist here, an elegant assist. And I think with the intelligence of our wide players, Jack Harrison and Rafinha, they will be making these inside forward runs. These, they, they, uh, pardon me, they will be making these sort of runs. And, and I can see Coop Miners and, and a lot of our attacking players working really, really well together and I think this was an absolutely lovely ball which led to a goal for AZ Altmar. <clears throat> Another one here which just shows um, this is against Her um, Heravine I think it is how you pronounce it I apologise if I've murdered that this is with his right foot, as we can see. Um, he can use his left and his right foot. And this is, I think he's got two assists this year with his right foot. Uh, this is an absolutely wonderful ball over the top. As you can see, number nine, Badu, receives the ball there and puts it away. A lovely finish. And it's just his vision. Is This is what I love about him as well. It's his vision. And I think, you know, having a high football IQ, being a left footer and having a great... Um, sort of degree of vision in the midfield and always having time on the ball. I think whenever I've watched Coop Miners, he always has time on the ball. And that's not a coincidence. That's him creating space for himself. That's how good he is off the ball. And he enables himself to get so many goals and so many assists because of that. This, I mean, look at that. What a ball. And and this is <clears throat> this is what I say all the time, you know, about uh, Rafinha and Jack Harrison and Patrick Bamford. I mean, the beneficiaries that we're going to have from someone like Coop Miners in this side. As I keep saying, he's so direct. He's so forward thinking. And I just think this would be a wonderful addition to Leeds. He pings the ball in here and it's, a, it's an absolutely fantastic assist. And of course, he's got goals to his game. He's got goals to his game. And we're going to get those statistics up in a little bit, guys. Coop Miners drilling the ball home here. This reminded me, and look at the opposition, you know, it's PSV once again. We're seeing Ajax, we're seeing Twente, we're seeing all of these sort of top era diverse sides that he's coming up against and, and, and having very good performances in front of, you know, having very good defensive actions, very good offensive actions. And he's, a, I just like everything about him. This sort of reminded me a little bit of Steven Gerrard. It was the box to box. It was him. It was him coming from the halfway line when he was in a defensive action to receive this uh, the ball off his off his partner here and drill it into the bottom corner. A really exquisite finish here. I mean, this look at the opponent again. He's the absolute PSV fans. They they, they must absolutely despise the sight of him. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you can try get this on YouTube, he, the ball comes in and this is his positional awareness once again. A lot of our corners, and we've seen that this season and over the couple of years before Rafa really hit the first man. What I love about Coop Miners is he always has the intelligence to run across the, fir uh, the first man. We see that with Ailing quite a lot. Coop Miners is the exact same, but this is exquisite. This is one of the best finishes I've seen. I was really surprised when I saw that this was this season. He flicks the ball there under pressure and it goes beyond the keeper and into the top corner. It's an absolutely superb goal. Well worth the YouTube search if you haven't already. And this is this is Coop Miners in his absolute. <laughs> this is him in his favourite position, really. And this is, you know, as as a, as a championship fan, 
um, that we were for so many years. This reminds me a lot of Conor Hurahan, you know, when Conor Hurahan was at Barnsley and we saw him at Villa occupying this position. He, all, he obviously scored that wonder goal against Leeds when Barnsley beat Leeds 3-2, but this reminded me of that goal. And Coop Miners takes up very similar positions in terms of on corners. He'll always get the ball when and, and he puts it down and he wants to take it. He's the captain of the side. He's a leader at 23. This guy's going to be absolutely phenomenal, everyone. Takes penalties, takes free kicks, and this is just an unbelievable goal. And wouldn't it be great on set pieces to have someone like him? Because set pieces are, are such a key avenue to score. We've seen that with regard regards to what's happened in the Premier League this year. You know, can we add that into an attacking phase of our play, being dangerous from set pieces next year? And I really think someone like Coop Miners would be absolutely exceptional at that, really. Um, but that's it, guys, with regards to uh, the slideshow just there. What I wanted to mirror up uh, just just initially here, which you guys will, will like to see, of course, is uh, just this Who Scored page and just some of his statistics this year. Um, Iridiverse, as you can see there, uh, he's had 200, uh, uh, 200, 2,430 minutes, if you can't quite see that. 15 goals, five assists. <laughs> Absolutely staggering. Uh, he's had Europa League, he's had, he's had experience there. Um, and look, he's got Champions League experience as well in the KNVB Cup. But as you can see here, a lot of you were talking about whether or not he can play in the eight. I think he could definitely play in the eight, but I don't know if I'd put him in the eight because he's so combative, so energetic and so good defensively as well. I don't think we'd naturally have to have an eight because I think an eight is very attacking. Um, and maybe doesn't pick up as much defensive work in this Marcelo Bielsa system. I think Coop Miners would be able to maybe even sort of reinvigorate the number eight role and maybe make it into a six where he's just bombing forward, having that box-to-box -box midfielder role um, and being able to defend as well, having it all. You know, I wouldn't na naturally call Steven Gerrard um, a number eight. I don't think he was that sort of player. I think he was box-to-box. -box. And I think being a box-to-box -box mi midfielder is categorised in its own vein, really. You don't have a position, uh, a, a number um, attached to it. I think it's that sort of... Um, sort of underestimating his his ability, maybe. And as you can see here, weaknesses none, uh, strengths passing, direct free kicks, which we've seen, long shots, uh, tackling, concentration, which is huge. We've seen that with Gianni Alioski over the past couple of days, especially in the Fulham game. You guys know when I was very, uh, I criticised his, his footballing decisions, and I think concentration does come into a footballer's IQ. I think it's pivotal. Coop Miner's style of play likes to play long balls. Calvin Phillips, there you go. Plays a long ball off the ground often, which is what, once again, we see with Calvin Phillips. And the one here I love to see likes the tackle. I, I do sometimes think we're a little bit soft in the midfield. Uh, this is Transfer Market's valuation of him. They think he'll be about 15.75 million. A lot of you guys are talking about 30 million potentially being too much for Leeds United. I don't think that is a lot for us anymore. I know we've broken our record signing with Rodrigo Moreno, which was an excellent signing. I think it's no... I think it's obvious that Leeds United are looking for a centre midfielder, especially a versatile midfielder. And, and you look at where he can play, you know, his, his main position is defensive midfield. But as I've said, I think he's box to box. I don't think he'd be restricted to that position. I think Calvin Phillips could really forge a good relationship with him. And he just seems the complete package. He's a, he's a very, very good player. And he's someone who I've looked at, obviously, last year when I was doing the room mill and doing research on that. You guys know that for the room mill, I don't just turn up and talk about it because I like to do research. I like to put in a lot of effort for these videos. It takes me a long time. Um, but I also think he'd just give a, a really nice balance to that central midfield area being a left footer. I think you know, we need balance across the pitch. And I don't think we've got that at this moment in time. And I think having balance in any side is the key to success. Balance with quality as well. I mean, that's the perfect concoction. Um, but yeah, 15.75 million. A lot of people were talking about that, you know, 30 million being too much. And the, the reason I mentioned Rodrigo Moreno earlier was because we've already broken that transfer budget. And I think to go for another elite player, you're looking at 30 million, a 23-year-old, a Dutch international, the captain of his club, 15 goals this season from central midfield. I would be happy to pay. I mean, I'm, it's obviously not out of my back pocket, but I think 30 million is still a steal for someone like him, in, in my personal opinion. And as we see here, guys, as we speak right now, uh, the Eurodiverse's top goal scorer, um, Glakamakis. 
I think I've absolutely nailed that pronunciation. Glakamakis, top. Uh, we can see 24 goals there. But then you look at Bergwe there and then you look at Malin, who I believe are inside forwards. And then you look at Dusan Tadic just below Coop Miners. But Coop Miners is a midfielder, guys. I mean, come on. Look at some of these stats. And of course, we know the league that he's in. But even just the shot accuracy, look at that 69% with the amount of goals he scores. That's a, that's an absolutely brilliant ratio. Um, so yeah, I just I just think he, he really is a, a great a, he would be a great addition to this side. There's a lot of you guys commenting in, um, which is which is really interesting. Uh, so excited uh, says says Luke to see free and Rodrigo to Paul. Yeah, if I'm honest with you, mate, that's not happening. <laughs> it's all smoke. But I, I wanted to keep this. I wanted to keep this on on on, on Tian. I really did. Um, and yeah, I think I think that's going to be it, guys. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. It's been about a thirty-minute length. Um, I want to I want to keep these rumor mills to about that length, so you guys can really enjoy it. You can sort of uh, enjoy the detail as well. Obviously, I love the fact that you're talking um, within your your community. I know Vic Vinegar was asking me a few questions about whether or not he can be an eight, whether or not he can, you know, uh, well, I think that's what he said, mate. Um, be an eight. And, 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 and I hope I've answered those questions. That's why I do the research. That's why I go away and, and try my hardest to inform you guys. So I really hope that you've enjoyed this video. Um, as as, as Sorin says, it uh, sounds like a, a great potential addition to this squad. I agree. And, I, and I've just seen up uh, up above there that somebody's talked about him being a leader as well, which is, which is really interesting because we need leaders in our squad. And I think we need a little bit of nastiness. We've seen that with Llorente. Maybe not in the best form, but we've seen that with uh, Diego Llorente. We've seen a little bit uh, of nastiness with Luke Aylin. I quite like the Aylin flop that he does to, to, to regain possession for Leeds United. We see every other side doing it. Coop Miners is the aggression, is the energy, is the physicality, is the exuberance, is the elegance, is the exquisite, is everything for me. He's, he's a real package as a midfielder. And a lot of people will be asking, are there any suitors after him? Well, yeah, but that that's football, isn't it, guys? You know, the, you, you look at someone like Everton, who who probably would profit from someone like Tian Coop Miners. Will they be in the market for him? You know, but the, the good thing is with Dutch players, you know, when they've come over to the English league, they've always been for a good price. You know, you look back in history, they've always been at a very, very good price. So I think this one's a definite mover. I really do. I don't know what, what Victor Otto's going to be doing. I know this was murmured last summer. <clears throat> um. I know this was maybe last summer. Is it going to happen this summer? Who knows? Um, uh, I am Dutch. Uh, it says Klaza and Coop Miners is one of the best players in the league. That's I really appreciate that. It's really nice to see some Dutch people on the stream. Uh, 100% he's leaving AZ this summer, says Sorin. Um, apparently Inter want him. <clears throat> it's a weird thing, isn't it? Because obviously Inter want him. And, and, I, and I'm, not, I'm not drawing comparisons with Leeds being the size of club that that others are. But, you know, Rodrigo Moreno was at Valencia uh, playing regular football. Uh, Rafinha was at Wren in a Champions League outfit. I'd, I'd, aside from it being out of the big boys, really, and obviously Inter are a, are a massive club, but I do wonder what package Leeds are going to be offering these potential players. And it's clearly worked with Rafinha. Um, I think they'll have been, I think, you know, Wren would have gone from strength to strength this year if they'd have had Rafinha. I think Rodrigo Moreno, we saw the success of him in Spain as well. So I think the pulling power of Leeds United at this moment in time really is exciting for a lot of European players, especially with Marcelo Bielsa at the helm. And a lot of teams and a lot of players will have seen what Leeds have done this year and want to be part of that project. Um, so yeah, guys, it's really exciting. I'm really, this one is for me, a really good one. I can see a lot of people talking about Camavinga as well. Rafinha knows him, says Edward. Um, yeah, he is a little bit of a different sort of player is Camavinga, but um, Coop Miners, this is this is the rumour mill, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. If, if you want to share this sort of stuff with your friends, that'd be really appreciated. Um, we're trying to get some more content out for you in this, in, this, uh, in this international break. I know you guys are bored, so we'll have some topical, some trending stuff coming up in the next couple of days. I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. Um, if you'd give me a big like, that genuinely does mean the world. As I always say on this channel, if you don't like it, I, I always just think to myself, you don't enjoy the content. So, uh, so that's why I stopped the room the last time because I always take the likes as an indication to help the channel out, guys. 
team wall art below. We've got some amazing graphics on there. The new Rafinha plaque has just been sent out by team wall art. They're getting mad orders for it. Please go down there, uh, check it out. One leads, if you stick one leads in the uh, in the coupon code section at the end, you get 10% off and you get plaques for a fiver. I think the max fiver is eight quid. So yeah, honestly, guys, it's well worth it. Um, have a lovely evening. Um, and if, if, if you're not subscribed, to the channel uh please do that and and uh yeah guys i will be back i will be back very very soon thank you so